Snavely is a delightful example of Macintosh shareware that came into existence in 1995. This game sees the player take control of two snakes, one red and one blue, which are placed into the play area and directed around. Crossing the paths of the snakes creates an egg, with each level requiring a certain amount of eggs to be produced before a snake hole is generated that takes the snakes to the next level. Each snake has a set number of lives. One is lost whenever they stray out of the arena. So why would I allow my snakes to veer out of the arena? I hear you cry in bewilderment. Well, it's easier to do than you might think. Snavely plays best with two people. That's one brain per snake. Remappable keys enable the keyboard to be shared comfortably. And as the controls are only up, down, left, right, you're not going to be fighting over finger room. Now that's not to say this game can't be played successfully by oneself. It absolutely can, but it's a faff. Trying to control two snakes simultaneously with two sets of keys is immensely difficult, particularly when they slither onto opposite sides of the screen from where they started and the mix-up of which buttons control which snakes inevitably occurs. There is a mono control scheme available, which enables you to thump the option key to change which snake you're controlling. This will, however, still result in many mistakes. Aside from the difficulties of multi-snaking, if you're playing on your own, the other major reason for losing a snake occurs when bumping into eggs. Slithering into an egg you made earlier results in the snake ricocheting off at a 90 degree angle. This becomes a colossal hazard during later levels, when the egg quota is higher and when they've started floating around. Getting the snakes to the same location becomes a big challenge, as the snakes begin bouncing off multiple eggs and can fly off in completely unintended directions. Being bumped off the playing field is therefore a major threat. As you can see, it's not just snakes and eggs on the screen. Throughout the earlier levels, the game introduces thingies, one by one. Some are useful, others are quite malicious. So first of these, then, is the Stomper. The result of a love affair between a Slinky and a Plunger, the Stomper romps horizontally across the play area, from right to left. Any eggs in its path are flattened, making the Stomper a major nuisance. If left to its own devices, it can be immensely destructive. However, confronting it head-on will reveal just how fierce your snakes can be. A swift growl will send the Stomper skittering away to cower for a bit before eventually plucking up enough courage to return after a minute or so. The second item introduced is the Cupcake, which as we all know is a snake's favourite food. When encountered, a snake will stop to eat the Cupcake, allowing the other one to create eggs more easily. It's not particularly useful with two players, unless someone needs a moment to itch a scratch or sip some tea but it does have its use in single player, as it enables the player to concentrate on a single snake for a bit. Next is the cup of coffee, which makes snakes move faster. This is most certainly useful in earlier levels as it speeds things up, but rapid movement can be a potential nightmare later on when you need more control over the snakes. A couple of items enable egg management. The broom allows you to push eggs about the play area, tidying things up and reducing the likelihood of scrambled eggs. Combined with the basket, which removes eggs from the play area safely without a fall in your quota, and these items become vital for later level success, freeing up space where more eggs can be made. The drawback here is that these items will only last for so long, so it's best not to pick them up until you really need them. The final thingy and yes, this game refers to everything that isn't a snake or snake egg as thingies, is the egg beater. This nasty appears from the left side and moves around erratically, splattering eggs as it goes. It's good to deal with these ASAP, and it's easy enough to do, with the egg beaters falling apart on contact with a mighty snake. While most of the backgrounds aren't particularly attractive, all other graphics are brightly coloured and quite appealing. The benefit of this contrast is that you can easily see where your snakes are. The music, which is currently playing in the background, is also quite fitting. 
although at least one of the tracks originates from an older game. System requirements are minimal, needing only 2 megabytes of RAM, a 256 color monitor, and System 7. Resources in this game file do suggest this game might at one point have been planned to work with earlier machines, with simple black and white icons still present in the game data. Emulation compatibility ranges from patchy to untested, so you may or may not be able to get this working on your virtual setup. All in all, I would rank Snavely as one of the best cooperative shareware titles for the Mac. It's fun, frustrating and frantic, and it brims with character. If you have a chum and an old Mac, or no chums but lots of determination, this is worth trying out. You can find a download link in the video description. Now that's it for this review of Snavely. Thanks ever so much for watching.